Hey everyone, welcome. Thanks for joining me again today. Uh, we're going to be playing a game called Chaos Control on the Sega Saturn, um, which has seen three releases on the Saturn. First one in Japan, which didn't have light gun support, and then it was released in Europe under the same name uh, that supported the Virtua gun, and then re released again in Japan under the name Chaos Control Remix, which had light gun support and enhanced graphics. Um, it's <laughs> it's just your basic uh, rail shooter. All the enemies just fly around in front of you and you just got to shoot them and uh, make sure you get them all before they shoot you. Uh, it's, it's not a very complex game, but uh, in the little practices that I've had, I found it to be uh, a little bit difficult. So what I've done, I've put the game on easy mode, I've maxed out the amount of continues I can have, and hopefully um, I'll be able to get quite a way into the game and show you as much of it as I can. If we're really lucky, maybe I'll even finish it, but I don't fancy my chances. Let's have a look at the intro. March 3rd, 1972. The space orbiter Pioneer 10 took off with a message indicating the Earth's coordinates for the use of extraterrestrial beings. 2050. Quite a long time after having left the solar system, Pioneer 10 was continuing its cosmic journey when it was suddenly stopped in the middle of space and didn't emit anymore. Back on Earth, technicians suspected a transmission failure. How wrong they were. Someone had intercepted the Earth's foolhardy message and was about to use it for his own purpose. course. Runway clear. Maintenance team needed in the central dome. Maintenance team needed. Commander, Lieutenant Darkill is here. Let her come in, please. Lieutenant Jessica Darkhill, 11th Squadron. Yes, sir. At ease, Lieutenant. Let me introduce you to Major Karanov. As you know, the situation in New Babylon is critical. Only a few days and the repeated assaults of the Keshran will defeat our defense system. That is, if you can call it a defense system. Don't forget that before the war, New Babylon used to be a civil base, not a bastion. Major Karanov? Commander. Please go on. Explain to the Lieutenant why she is here today. Yes. Lieutenant, you probably know that the Keshran fleet just went into orbit around the Earth after the destruction of our colony on Mars. I know that Major Morgan and yourself did the best you could do. Major Karanov, please, let's simply go straight to the point. Thank you. Sorry, Commander. Lieutenant, we have just discovered what the Keshran are preparing around the Earth. Three hours ago, what is undoubtedly the flagship rejoined the rest of their armada. The flagship emerged into normal space beyond Pluto's orbit before getting into position at the Lagrange 5 point. Since then, the enemy forces have joined it. We can therefore expect the worst. Facing this threat, the High Command has decided to attack the Keshran flagship. For this operation, you and your squadron are assigned to the general headquarters of the Manhattan Orbital Defense Forces of the Earth in New York. Thank you, Major. After the takeoff of your unit, the civil and scientific personnel of the base is going to be evacuated, helped in part by the 5th Squadron. You are in charge of guiding and protecting them until Manhattan. Do you have any questions? No, everything is clear, Commander. May I leave? Yes. Lieutenant? Jessica? Take care, all right? You too, Father. Don't worry, I'll see you later. Sometimes I wish I could avoid giving some orders. I know how much it costs you to assign such a mission to your own daughter, but it was the only solution you had. Lieutenant Darkheel is our best pilot, and she is also an excellent tactician. But maybe I should have avoided mentioning Major Morgan. Karanov, 
I have spent my whole life trying to prepare her to face such events. But today, I would give anything to have her be somewhere else. God bless her, and may he forgive me. Here you go. You can always depend on the Japanese to make a long, drawn-out, convoluted story for it. It's essentially just a point-and-shoot game. But uh, let's uh, let's get into it. Um, I've already calibrated the light gun, and uh, I'm just ready to go. Group two, stay behind in a defensive position. Be careful, okay? Don't worry, Lieutenant. Okay. To all groups, attention. Let's go. Now, as usual, I'm playing this on the original console. I'm using a European Sega Saturn and a European version of the game. Now, the console is unmodified, and I'm also using the Virtua, which is uh, the Sega's um, Sega's own light gun, first-party light gun controller. Also known as the, I think it was called the Saturn gun as well in some regions. I think in Europe, it was called a virtual gun. I'm not really sure which one. Now, I don't think there are any friendlies I've got to avoid. Uh, just got to make sure I take out as many enemies as I can. And whenever I see a green laser shooting at me, it means I'm being hit. Now, as you notice, if I'm not shooting, my score is still going up. So I get time bonuses. But I also get more points for hitting enemies. Believe it or not. But, yeah, you just get points for surviving. So as long as you're going to hold out, you will get points. <laughs> and as you can see, the resolution on the sand wasn't particularly great. Not too many colours. So the picture doesn't look fantastic on a modern screen. It didn't look particularly great on a on a CRT either, but at least those sharp pixel pixel edges were smoothed out a bit by the uh, warm glow of phosphorus. I've got to say, the Sega Virtua Gun is not a comfortable gun to be using for very long already. My, uh, my trigger finger is getting tired. And it's really noisy as well. It's a very loud click. A bit squeaky as well. But hopefully that's not coming through on the recording. wrist is already a bit sore. And my life is already all the way down. I'm not going to last much longer on my first life. Yeah, I said this was a hard game, at least I thought so. And there we go, that's my first life out already. Okay. supposed to shoot that big thing but I seem to keep making passes at it. 
about a breeze. This does remind me a bit of uh, LA Machine Guns, which was obviously a later game than this, so may maybe they're in the same um, series, possible. I think they're both... Um, I think... Uh, yeah, LA Machine Guns was on the Sega Model 3 arcade system, so you know they could be related if Sega had their hand in it. But then again, I could just be way off. It could just be a typical Japanese style alien invasion shoot 'em up. I'm almost out of life again. Yeah, I'm not very good at this. If you can see green lasers, it means you're getting No matter where they seem to be pointing. Oh, is this a boss? Samurai flying robot. Did I get him? Did that? I suppose you've read the technical file concerning the new fighter you're about to pilot for the counterattack. Yes, General. I noticed that it uses a new mental control system derived from the one I had the opportunity to test before. Except for a few modifications, it is identical. This prototype will follow all your reactions. Here it is. It's a huge monster! Yes. This spaceship has four coupling Holocaust MK4 railguns. They're usually installed on heavy ground vehicles. With this, you'll have the same firepower as your squadron. With the materials it's made of in its new piloting system, this monster, as you call it, is as easy to handle as a spy fighter. I think we're going to do great things together. Red alert. Red alert. A and B doors clear. Squadrons 2, 5, and 7. Immediate takeoff.
This is Prima Levi. Everybody has received his main objective. If we want to avoid a second Mars, we have to be quick and strong. Don't worry, Prima Bella. We are going to clean everything up. I don't want those pigs to destroy Central Park. I've always dreamed of going there for a walk. With you. Hank, even if you fail, I'll find you in hell and kick your ass. Pretty cute stuff, you lovebirds. Come on, Squadron One. Let's get ready for takeoff. Oh, my health is really low. Oh, straight away. I did notice my health was right down at the end of that last level. I didn't think I'd last very long now. There's quite a lot going on. Clouds really to um, hide the enemy. Can't get him. It's not timed right. I'm able to blow up those big ships, or if I should just concentrate mainly on the little ones. Probably a good idea, really. Oh no, another life down already. This is very difficult, I think.
<laughs> Another one of those flying robot ninja guys. Samurai guys. Much life left. They'll need this way to get more. <laughs> Next one. Two of them now. Are we going to be able to take one out? They are attacking. One down. Cleared screen, Prima Bella. You know, the problem with these damn Gesheron is that they're just enough to give you some appetite. Hank, if you are still hungry, have a look at 4.7. Didn't think that. Well, you wanted the main course? Here you have it. Okay, in formation. Blue and green leaders confront the enemy interceptors with your squadrons. The rest of the units, follow me. Let's attack the flagship. We follow you, Prima Bella. Hank, trust me. Wait till we're back to the base. Okay. So it sounds kind of like we're approaching the final stage. Uh, this might not be it, it might be the penultimate one, who knows, but, or well, there could be plenty more. Um, but it did sound like we were drawing to a conclusion, attacking the flagship. We might make it to the end yet. Is this a choice? Yes, I can choose which direction I want to take. Ah, oh, let's take left. Oh, I pulled the trigger to change the direction of the arrow. I only had the two options. And then, of course, start to, to confirm. So there is a bit of interaction. It's not entirely passive experience. I actually do get to make a choice. It's something I do makes a difference to the game. I had noticed that this is pure... Well, up to that point, it was purely on rails. Missing an enemy doesn't actually make a difference. So eventually, the time just runs out and... And, uh, and the level finishes. But what I think's happened is they've they've clearly made a 3D model of the landscape and they're flying a camera through it virtually. And they've just recorded a, recorded a film 
and then they've overlaid um, enemy sprites or enemy models. Yeah, I think that's kind of how it works. That's probably... Oh, I failed. I've got to start this again. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that probably explains why the, the sequence is just so fluid. It's just, just a video clip with enemies dropped on top. And it's, you know, to be honest, it's not bad. For the time, for the technology they had at the time, they actually made it work. So I'd say those... those backgrounds aren't being rendered in real time by the sound. They're pre-rendered. It's a pre-rendered video. But it looks impressive for someone who um, was playing it in the day. Shall I go the... I'll take the straight ahead path this time. Clearly need to do better than I I did before. Straight ahead again. Is this the same same choice? This is different, I'm not sure. Maybe this is a maze. And I've got to work out what the correct path is. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I haven't got, not got much health left. Left or right? Let's go right. I think one, one or two more hits, and I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Chickens. The earth counts on you. Don't screw it up this time. Oh, I failed. What I, I don't I don't really know what I was supposed to do. So I'm going to take the straight ahead path because that worked out all right last time. If it is a maze, then I've got to choose the right path. And maybe, maybe those failures were because I took the wrong path rather than having done something wrong. So I went straight ahead twice. And I think on the next one I had a choice between left and right. And I chose right. So I can choose left next time.
this is the spot, isn't it? It's left or right, and I think I took right last time. So let's take a left. Can't see any enemies. All I know is I'm being shot at. The earth counts on you. Don't screw it up this time. I screwed it up. Okay. At least I'm not losing a life by taking a wrong turn. I, I, I'm pretty sure it is, they are wrong turns. Maybe the right turn there was correct. It was the next one. And I just can't remember it now. I'd say at least I'm not losing a life. I'm, I am losing health with each attempt. Straight ahead. And straight ahead again. out of health here. Right, this is is this the left right choice? Okay, so let's take the right turn. I made after this. Counts on you. Don't screw it. Okay. Alright, so that wasn't right. Well, maybe it's um, the second choice. Maybe I shouldn't be going straight ahead there. Maybe for turning. This is, uh, this is frustrating, not really knowing what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a maze situation. Because I don't see any reason, other reason why I'm failing this. This is the first choice. And uh, I know I definitely failed when I went left that time, that first time. So we're going to go straight on. And this is the second choice. Now, every time I've gone straight ahead here. So let's take a right here. Hopefully this will lead 
to the end. I might have a couple more choices to make my way through, but hopefully I'll get lucky and find my way before I run out of life. This is familiar. No, it just looks a bit like it. the tunnel I was in earlier. enemy fire, I'm already about to finish this life. See? So difficult. I mean, it's not necessarily a difficult game, it's just a punishing one. This isn't another choice. Looks suspiciously like an end of stage buff. Did I get him? Did I take him out? Oh, we just flew straight through that wall. So that was it. I had to take the second right. That's all I had to do. And the giant sword ship has been blown up. Could this be the end of the game? It's starting to look like it. I think so. Commander, our radar has just detected a surge of energy at Lagrange Five Point. Damn it. It's Jessica. Did you note the position of the fighting groups? No, Commander. No localization for the time being. But I received messages from some isolated vessels. I can't believe it. No flagship left. Hooray! We got it! Have you noticed a mess in the rest of their fleet? Yeah, but uh, who did it? Hank to Prima Leader. Hank to Prima Leader, answer. Jessica, answer. Jessica, my God, look at that. They're withdrawing. Look, they're fleeing. Commander, I have an isolated call on an emergency channel. Major Darkfield to Lunar Base. Can you hear me? Asking for immediate landing authorization. Damaged vessel. I repeat. Jessica, you're alive. I need more than that, Father. The vessel can hardly fly. Bring out all your emergency vehicles. It's going to be a tough landing. And for a tough landing, you need a tough guy. Hank? 
What are you up to? Well, when you're a gentleman, it's always a pleasure to bring the little lady back home. Right, fellas? Yeah, especially a lady like this one. Father, I think this time it's over. We got them. It seems so, Jessica. I hope so. I was starting to get a bit worried there that we might have another level. But this music sounds like the end. Let's just hang on for a moment and see what happens. It's the end. There you go. We actually made it. It's quite a difficult game to not die in. And that was on the easy skill level. I think if I was on medium, then uh, I don't think I would have got nearly as far. Uh, but that's all there is to it that's the end of the game so um if you enjoyed that hit the like button if you want to see more videos like this in the future then hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notifications uh, but that's all up to you and if you've played this game before i want to hear about it leave a comment uh, or if you have any games that you remember that you'd like to see me play i will do my best and see if i can oblige but uh as it stands, that is all from me today. Again, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you again in the next one. Goodbye.